tell me about some of the history of the fort and, you know, why you think it's so interesting and stuff like that. Well, it was established in 1842 as a permanent Indian frontier fort. Um, it was basically a fort to um, be kind of like a border patrol. Um, the road, uh, there's a main highway here called Highway 69. That was right around the spot where the military road was. And that was the edge of the country at that time. Wow. So we were there to protect the fort. Um, we were here to protect the settlers, and we were also here to protect the Native Americans because we wanted to make sure that the settlers didn't get into their lands, and we didn't make sure the Native Americans stayed on their side of the land as well. What tribes were here at that time? Um, the main tribe that was in the area for a while was the Osage. But as the time we came here in 1842, a lot of the eastern Indian tribes have started to move west. So Cherokee, uh, Shawnee, Pawnee, um, just to name a few. Were the Osage mainly farming or were they hunters? The Osage were actually um, nonviolent. Um, they were um, actually there are stories of actually Native Amer other Native American tribes taking Osage Indians as slaves because they were so nonviolent. Um, but they were also the tallest Native Americans. Huh. They were, average height was around six foot. Wow. So they were pretty tall. Um, they were um, kind of trade and farming and hunting and things, so. I see. How long was the fort active? When did it close? Um, we were active till about 1854, from 1842. Um, after the Mexican War, um, we got all of this land all the way out to California, and there was no need for a border fort. Um, it was sold off to the town, and uh, many ho many buildings became hotels and um, other other uses. And this was around the time of Bleeding Kansas. Mm. So Bleeding Kansas was when a lot of free staters and pro-slavery um, supporters were coming in trying to figure out what is Kansas. Since Kansas is right along that line of if you're either Union or, um, or the South, you have that fight that's happened. So there was a hotel here that was pro-slavery and you have a hotel here that was free state. So you can imagine there was a lot of tension between the two. So Missouri was a slave state, Kansas was a free state, so how how many miles is it from here to Missouri? So this really was the border of Ma that conflict, right? Yeah. Um, Missouri was, um, is about 20 miles, well it's actually about 7 miles from here, but uh, the nearest town is about 20 miles. Okay. Um, yeah, and it's, um, it was, it was, there was a lot of fighting and the army had to be called in to start uh, to kind of quell the the fighting, um, and then um, the Civil War broke out. And but by that time, the Union came, and Kansas became a Union state. So this was a fort. Um, this was a hospital and a depot during the Civil War period. Any famous generals? Any military persona? even before the Civil War there are of note that were stationed here at Fort Scott? Um, there were um, there were a few. It was named after Winfield Scott, mm -hmm. um, the general. Mm -hmm. So um, he wasn't too happy with it, actually. Um, he actually said he's never been to Kansas. Why do I get a fort named after me in Kansas? Um, so he, was, he wasn't too happy about that. Uh, but Captain Swords was our uh, resident um, quartermaster. He was the one that kind of helped build the fort as well. Um, and he was kind of predominant in many different things. So, uh, so yeah. Interesting.